And so the most strident calls for decoupling are actually coming from the United States and to a lesser extent from Europe, not from China. But here's the problem for those in my country who advocate a U.S.-China divorce. Decoupling is easier when you're actually a couple. But the United States and China are not, in fact, a couple. There are more than two players here, and the rest of Asia in particular gets a vote. So the U.S. can try to divorce China by restricting flows of good capital technology and people. But what if others, especially in Asia, don't want to follow suit? Many years of working in and around Asia have taught me this. I do not believe that any country in Asia can afford to divorce China or even wishes to do so. This is a function of their geography, of economic gravity, and of the strategic reality they live with each and every day. It is true that many governments and businesses around the world share Washington's current concerns. And sometimes these governments and businesses are pursuing similar policy and business choices, particularly with regard to, to screening and uh, investment screening for national security risk, uh, which is being bolstered by a number of countries, especially in Western Europe. Excuse me. But let us not presume this also means that everyone, including America's closest clients, are ready to divorce China, as some in Washington would now have it. On the contrary, no country, in my view, will divorce a major nation that remains even amidst a slowdown among the world's fastest growing major economies. So in an effort to isolate China, the United States risks isolating itself. Consider what would happen if, for instance, if multinational companies decided they, they should be headquartered somewhere else, still aiming to ride the wave of a growing Chinese economy, but in a country less hostile to their doing business with Beijing. Hosting scores of leading, best-in-class multinational corporations is among America's greatest competitive strength. And it is one that America now risks surrendering if it cannot get right its links with the world's fastest growing economies, including China's. Frankly, deintegration is inevitable and even necessary in some areas, not least to protect our national security. But it is decidedly not in America's interest to attempt this across the board. Divorce doesn't work well for global businesses. <laughs> 